Hello and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. This week we'll be going over Cataclysm, what it kind of entails, why people hated it, what to look actually forward to in Cataclysm, what's changing, etc. We have the weekly news, as always though. We have Besrikron Zakali Elders as your world bosses, and with the introduction of the Emerald Dream and 10.2, we have a new world boss called Aristor the Hibernator. Um, this world boss is located in the Emerald Dream. He's located on the slap bang in the middle, essentially, uh, is the best way to put it. And if you are a druid, he has the potential to drop a bear form uh, cosmetic for you so definitely worth killing him until you get that cosmetic it is a rune bear it looks really cool really worth it and druids you just got to try and get this it, it looks absolutely amazing um the bonus events for this week are battlegrounds so you earn more honor in battlegrounds and we also have the 19th anniversary of wow so we have stuff like the old classic um what is it, Outerack Valley, we have uh, the Doomwalker world boss outside Caverns of Time, that is guaranteed to drop a mount, I believe, so head on over there and uh, do that. We have uh, the mythic affixes for this week are Incomporal, Sanguine and Fortified. Incomporal, you have to essentially keep moving, every now and again you'll fade out of existence, I'm not sure if that reduces damage haste, I still need to look into that. Sanguine, when a mob dies, it puts a red pool on the floor. Move mobs out of it, don't stand in it, very simple. And fortified, the non-boss enemies have more health and deal more damage. Bring a talent build that can accommodate for this. The battleground, uh, um, the brawl for this week is uh, Battleground Blitz. Now, what this is, is an 8v8. It is rated and your mounts are 150% speed. And essentially, you always have two healers, 6 DPS on each team. And it's a bit different. It's essential. It's it's a different take on battlegrounds. Essentially, everything rotates depending on the map. So if it's a Rathi Basin, uh, the you cap something for forty seconds and then it's uncapped. What you can do is time your attacks on certain places within like the battleground and essentially try and take it over at certain points when it becomes neutral again. Um. But yeah, that is the weekly news for this week. Let's get into Cataclysm. So, with Cataclysm, a lot changed in the world of Azeroth. You have an entire world revamp. So, what this is, is essentially you have for classic World of Warcraft, as it is now. You have for classic TBC and Wrath of the Lich King. All of it, the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, are the same throughout all three of these expansions. What Cataclysm does is it shakes up the entirety of the world, the entire baseline of the game. This is why a lot of people hated it, um, because uh, back in 2010, when Cataclysm was released, there was six years worth of people essentially enjoying uh, the old zones. And I think around 2010 is when people started to get decent enough PCs and stuff like that, and internet, there wasn't dial-up, all that, all that stuff. So people actually could experience the zones a lot more and do a lot more content within it. Now, people switching to this after six years of potentially playing the game obviously can throw a bit of a spanner in the works and uh, can kind of upset a lot of people. It, everything was revamped. The quests, the zones, the new zones added flying, just the visuals itself around the like cities and towns etc all of it was revamped down to like a very small point essentially um this uh, includes the barrens being torn in half this includes a thousand needles becoming a flooded zone this also includes lock madan no longer having a lock um so it's just madan i guess um you have uh, a couple other places. You obviously have Stormwind that's burnt up by Deathwing, which is really cool, by the way. It's really cool. Um, and then you obviously have the new zones. And these new zones are Vashir, Twilight Highlands, Voldoom, uh, Hijau, which is really, really good. And you have the Tolbarad stuff. You have Gilneas. You have the Maelstrom. That's it. Deep Home. Now, out of these zones... Excuse me. I do have to say that 
one of them I think is not liked. And I would say that that zone is Vashir. Um, I think it's a cool concept of a zone, but I don't think it works in practice, um, in all honesty. Now, Twilight Highlands is really, really cool. I like the Ring of Blood there. I like the simple uh, nature of the quests, essentially. And, uh, you know, the same with High Jow. High Jow can lead you through... Um, like a pathing through the zone almost same with Vashir same with all of the new expansions at, or new zones um revamped zones actually do the same it's no longer go out kill 20 harpies come back go out kill more 20 harpies come back go out get collect some rings from these harpies and come back like one quest after the other it's all, okay, you know what, it, it takes you for a story of the zone rather than just go kill the harpies for the rings and I'll give you some boots because I need some rings to propose to my, you know, like, uh, what is it, my orc wife or whatever, like orc wife to be, you know, all that bullshit. Um, the, the actual zones in Cataclysm have stories in them and these stories are portrayed through the quests. And it is as you are progressing through the zone, you are seeing these quests unfold and seeing a conclusion to them all, which is really, really cool. For Hijau, I remember actually going and completing pretty much most of the zone. And towards the end, you see Ragnaros actually revived in the zone. And that leads up to Firelands, which is really, really cool. Firelands being the raid, obviously. It, it's really cool to see. And it's something that is overlooked um, in Cataclysm. Now, all of these zones are very good, like I said. The only one being uh, Vashir. I think uh, people have bad memories of these because uh, everything else was revamped. I think the zones are relatively decent in nature, in my honest opinion. Hijau being one of the best. Um, Twilight Highlands being good. Deep Home actually being surprisingly enjoyable. And I enjoyed it because you have the centre hub where you collect your quests and there's some portals and stuff, and then you start in the south and you work your way clockwise around the zone. It's just a giant circle, the zone, and you just work your way around clockwise quest, like for quests, which is really cool. And it's very you can kind of see where you're up to, which is really, really nice. Um, so I, I honestly think that the level of questing in Cataclysm gets so much better um compared to that of uh wrath of the lich king tbc and classic um this is where a lot of people think like oh the whole social aspect of uh, like classic's gone and all of that but a lot of it is due to people just wanting to level i think classic or classic is all about the leveling experience which i completely get and i do enjoy from time to time but it is very slow and you really do have to be like Someone who really enjoys it 24-7, me personally, I'm not too keen on it. I've leveled two mages to level 60, like in Classic and a Druid. It, it's not as enjoyable, I think, on any other classes because if you play a warrior, you only like have to kill one mob at a time, eat to full, and then kill another mob, etc., etc. Um, but yeah, that that's going off the point. Um, I think Cataclysm... In terms of quests, in terms of the quests that is given, it's very high standards, I would say, compared to Wrath of the Lich King, TBC, Classic, because it is very much just go and kill these things, but it actually has a story behind it. Now, some quest lines in Classic do have a story behind it. I will mention that. Like the Tyrian quests, they do have a story behind them. You have other quests in the Plaguelands relating to Nax Ramos, Stratholm, you know, stuff like that. But most of them are, like, if you look at the early quests, it is very much, oh, I've got a pair of gloves for you. If you do me a favour, go get six wolf meat, oh, I'll, I'll give you these gloves. And it's like, oh, okay, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, Yeah, you know, that, that kind of deal. But I think that the zones are really good and people are actually overlooking them. I think that people will enjoy them. I'm going to give Vashir a chance. I'm terrified of... The deep water but i do like the zone i like the idea of it so i'm definitely going to give it a try now the dungeons and raids i believe that there's going to be three raids that are available on the release of cataclysm 
My guess is that it will be Baradon's Hold, Vortex Pinnacle, and uh, the Blackwing Descent. Violins will be the last one, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to think what was the last patch. I'm pretty sure it was Violins that was the last patch of Cataclysm. So I think that will be the last one. Kind of like ICC, you save the best for last. Um, now, Vortex Pinnacle and Baradon Hold kind of meh they're just single bosses the baradon's hold is kind of vault um so you get pvp gear from it etc but the blackwing descent isn't bad it's uh, you can go to multiple bosses there's different wings to it and it is a fight against nefarian and anixia in the end which is really cool it's a nice little throwback um I, I think that the raids in Cataclysm are very good. The only one that I'm kind of not looking forward to is honestly the Twilight one. Um, that one just doesn't intrigue me. It doesn't look intriguing, uh, in all honesty. It, it's very linear, and I hate linear raids, in, in all honesty. Um, but yeah, there is uh, three raids uh, that are coming to the start of the expansion, and we will know the phases later on. But the release date of Cataclysm is obviously in the first half of 2024 that they said. So my guess around April time, the 2 point or 10.2.5 has been released or they have announced it and they're redoing the Valentine's Day event. So that will be released before um, Lovers in the Air uh, event in World of Warcraft. So you get two months uh, like of 10.2 or three, four months, I should say, around that. And then you get two months before Cataclysm drops and stuff happens around that. Now, we obviously get our two new races. We get Goblins and Wargons. Not the most exciting, I'm not going to lie. This one is kind of a bit of a downer. Um, Wargons aren't great. Goblins aren't great. If, if you want to be them, go for it. But they're not my favourite class. I understand why people do enjoy them, because you have two different forms. You have uh, the dark flight ratio is very good. The rocket jump ratio is very good. They, they do have some decent ratios, but I, I like the story behind the Worgen and the Goblins and how they join the factions. But ultimately, they're not the most enjoyable. Um, what are they? Races. So I'm, I'm not too bothered about it. And I think this is kind of what is a bit of a downer about um, Catter for other people. They're not the most fun races to enter the game. Like... As it were, you had hero classes in Death Knights and you had Draenei and Blood Elves. Draenei and Blood Elves are amazing lore character wise um, and they're absolutely amazing. You have mana starved, you know, people of Quel'Thalas who have been absolutely ravaged by the Scourge and all of that. And they're looking to rejoin the Horde and, you know, build essentially from their past and then you have the Draenei who are fleeing, who are exiled. Their name is literally exile, Draenei meaning exile, um, from the Burning Legion and from Kil'jaeden and Archimonde. And they are fleeing from them because the Burning Legion have essentially taken over their home world of Argus. And, you know, they're very cool. Whereas Worgen are just kind of, they were part of the human cities and then they walled themselves in. And then there was a curse. That, that's kind of it. That, that's it. Goblins, we see goblins all the time, but their home now is being, essentially they had to evacuate their home because a volcano erupted on it, you know, that kind of deal. Um, what I will say about the goblins is I do enjoy their starting zone, which is weird. The very first starting zone, I don't enjoy the Lost Isles, I enjoy Kazan, whatever it's called, um, because it is a kind of a wonder to see so during the first sort of few quests you get a little goblin trike that you can drive around and there's roads and there's technology and it's very cool actually to play around with and i think it's uh, one of the better starting zones in my honest opinion because you do get that little trike that you can like roll around in. you feel like a goblin like you're, you're just driving on these wonky roads and stuff on your little goblin trike it is very very cool and i will say that level 20 or level 85 is the new level cap now i remember these levels going very very slowly i remember them being quite tough but i think uh, since everyone kind of knows what to do it, it won't take long at all the first level 85 will be done in about 
few hours, if that, probably, you know, something like that. People always stack quests when a new expansion is about to come out, and then they just hand in all of these quests to get, like, a big bump of XP before anything else. Um, which, you know, it's all right, it's all right, but it, it's kind of boring, I'm not going to lie, just to do 20, 25 quests to hand them in, run them around, run around, hand them in, and stuff like that. Not, not enjoyable. Um, we do get more customizations for our characters. So this includes new race slash car, uh, class um, combinations. I believe you could be a gnome priest and a gnome hunter. I'm not too sure about the gnome hunter one. That might came a bit later. But you can be like a human hunter, maybe? Maybe. I can't remember. Possibly. You know, stuff like that. Um we don't get many other druids, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. Um, druids don't get a lot. I think it's Night Elf and Worgen or Druids, and it's Torrin. Oh my god, is it? Own? No, Torrin and Trolls or a Horde. And yeah, some classes get a bit more love than others, we'll say that. Um, but yeah, we also get Transmog. The Transmog system will be in the game. It's unclear whether or not you'll need the Void Storage system for it and stuff like that. The void storage is essentially where you store items that you can use to transmog. Um, this does cost a lot of gold, but since we're going to be on the latest patch of Cataclysm, which seems likely considering that's what they've done in the previous expansions, it might be okay just to do it normally from like your bank and stuff. You still will need the items and you can collect the items now um, and keep them in your bags until that transmog system is out. You do not have to sell your stuff or recollect them. So it's best to start collecting them now um, before anything. And obviously we get a, uh, what is it called? The reforge system, I believe. It comes with cataclysm. Reforging is essentially, um, you pick a stat on an item. So mastery or haste. You pick haste, you can redo uh, that stat or part of that stat to something else. That might be speed or it might be more haste or it might be more mastery or you know crit you know something like that um it's quite a cool system but the thing is you can only transfer about half of the stat um you can't transform all of the stats so no matter what you always still have you've got 300 haste you want to change the haste you'll still have 150 haste of it you can change a bit of it though which is always nice so they're the main sort of things of cataclysm but why do people hate Cataclysm? So I think the main reason being is the world revamp. A lot of people were attached to the old world and uh, they started to see the old world as a new home for them. And it, it kind of got ruined in a sense when the Cataclysm happened. Now, from my understanding, what people actually hate about Cataclysm is the antisocial aspect of it. A lot of people, people that I know have definitely said that's when a lot of uh, like stuff happened, either in their guild or they lost a lot of people like to playing in Cataclysm. Remember, back in the day, this is when the first sort of drop-off happened in terms of player base for World of Warcraft. You had about 10 million players, I think, around Wrath of the Lich King when Cataclysm came out. And by the end of Cataclysm, I think it was around 8 million players still, maybe 7 Something along them lines. So you had about two to three million people quit. And uh, obviously these two to three million people quitting will have an effect on others. So if you're a friend of one of the per like people, then a person who quit. So if one of them two million like people quit and they each had a friend, then suddenly it affects four million people rather than two, two million people, if that makes sense. Because that person's upset that they quit, so they've got no one to play with now and enjoy the actual game with them. So it kind of puts them off from playing the game. So I think this is why a lot of people actually don't enjoy Cataclysm, because guilds fell apart, friendships were not lost, but while friendships were like broken up, a lot of people just stopped playing. And that does have an effect on the people that carry on playing. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the main reasons that, you know, that actually people don't enjoy cataclysm because they associate it with that poor moment in the gaming like in wales history as a whole rather than judge it on the actual expansion itself they're judging it on 
who they were playing with at the time. I know a couple of my guildies um, didn't enjoy Cataclysm purely on the basis that before the expansion even started, their guild broke up, essentially. They disbanded. So he played at Cataclysm throughout like, the entirety of it alone. And that's no way to play an MMO. That's no way to play in like mass multiplayer online game. It's just not fun that way. So hopefully... The people that we're in a guild with are very hesitant. There's a couple of people who are looking forward to it. I myself am included. But there are a couple of people in our guild who are hesitant. And we want to give them sort of a great experience from it. Because that hesitation comes from, I think, a lot of bad memories of Cataclysm. Whether it be people quitting the game, guilds disbanding. Them just not enjoying the content. But hopefully in... As a guild, we can help them enjoy the content a bit more or in a different way, you know, that kind of deal. And I think that's what a lot of people will need to look at rather than like, oh my God, I'm already bored of Cataclysm and it's already been out for one day and I'm bored and, you know, stuff like that. Because everything will get cleared within a week. The raids will get cleared within a week, probably a couple of days, to be honest, they'll get cleared. Um... So there's no like race to world first or anything like that. They tried to do that with Nax Ramus when Classic was out, but that was cleared within an hour. Nax Ramus, like it, it's it's crazy how quickly the Classic stuff gets cleared. Um, Cataclysm is when it becomes more of retail raiding though, so I am very curious to see how people will be dealing with that. But again, we've known these raids for years and years, and people will have their own ways of dealing about it, and you know, doing the mechanics, etc. So. Everyone will already have a plan for it. Now, why is it going to be better this time around? It is because of what I've mentioned. The guilds, if you actually got a good social aspect, you will enjoy Cataclysm a lot more. Cataclysm brings forth so many, like, what is it? I've forgotten the words for it. Quality of life and changes to the game, as well as just more fun abilities into the game. Dark Simulacrum for... DKs, you have Wild Mushroom for Boomkins, you have uh, uh, Flame Orb for Mages, Time Warp for Mages, uh, Elemental Shamans get Overload procs on their Lava Bursts, you have uh, so many different things that make it actually enjoyable um, and uh, new ways to play. Um, I'm hoping that people see it in a different light. Because a lot of the bad and negative reviews that come from Cataclysm, I think it's because a lot of people just either lost the social aspect, their social aspect. There is still a lot of um, socialising in Cataclysm, don't get me wrong. It's just they lost their part of it. Because obviously you stick to a small group if you're raiding or just a small group of friends when you're playing and they lost that part in Cataclysm so they always associate it with it being a poor sort of memory but you know it is what it is. Um, I honestly have high hopes for Cataclysm. I think it will be a lot better than what people remember. I think the zones are going to be like a lot better than what people remember. I think the dungeon content's going to be great. The raiding, apart from that one raid for me but that's just you know personal opinion. Um, I think it will be amazing, and I honestly cannot wait for Kata. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts, because a lot of people are divided on Cataclysm, but I think that staying in Wrath of the Lich King will only diminish how good Wrath of the Lich King was. It's nice to experience it again, but if you stay in it, you will get bored of it, without a doubt. You cannot stay in the same expansion for years and years. People will get bored. But that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for listening. As always, do check out all of the social medias down below. Constant stuff happening over on them. But thank you all very much once again. And go with Valor, friend. Goodbye. All. <music>